first look at high school football scores and highlights from across the valley with Mo Carter and Hannah Alavito. This is First Down Friday Night on WCBX. Sponsored by Northeast Alabama Community College and Bojangles Famous Chicken and Biscuits. The temperatures have cooled down, but the action is heating up on the football field. We're ready to bring you all the highlights from the playoff edition right here on First Down Friday night. We have reached that time of the year where every high school football coach is saying the same thing, win or go home, because we are in the playoffs. Hey, I'm so ready for playoff action. Every team across the state right now, they've got goals to get to the Super 7 in T-Town this season. We'll start off with a team that was there last year, and that's Madison Academy. Taking on the same team, they beat in the semifinals last year and that's Holt's Bluff. We pick things up late in the first as Holt's Bluff is driving their quarterback Landon Johnson steps back and finds Braden Hill for the big first down. Now the Eagles will continue to drive into the second quarter before Johnson says you know what let me just call a quarterback sneak follow my blocks run over a man and I'm into the end zone for a score. Extra point was no good that makes it six to nothing. Now Madison Academy's quarterback Luke Nail a former first down Friday night MVP he struggled finding his receivers all night long, but he could find men in the Holtz Bluff secondary like this guy, Levi Telly of Ferro, coming up with his second interception of the game. Neil had three interceptions in the first half. This was a really, really tight ball game. Let's check out your final score, though, as Madison Academy is eliminated in the first round. They fall the Holtz Bluff by final of 12 to 10. All right, Bob Jones, they're in the playoffs for the 13th consecutive season, but haven't won a playoff game since 2013. Taking on Mountain Brook tonight, it was so cold they needed a heater on the sideline. First drive for the Patriots now. Caden Rose throws a quick screen to Demontrez Brown and watch the Troy commit. Break a couple of tackles and carry a man deep inside of Sp Spartan territory. But the drive would stall, so Jacob Fruwall is called upon to nail a short field goal. It is good. Patriots lead three to nothing. Later, it is six to nothing. The Spartans with the ball in Patriots territory. Anthony Gates takes the handoff and finds pay dirt for Mountain Brook. Extra point was good. So Spartans on top, seven to six. Now late in the second quarter, Bob Jones trying to regain the lead. Khalil Griffin will be seen here coming up in just a second. Says, give me the rock. Finds a few holes and dives into the end zone for a touchdown. Bob Jones up 12 to 7 at the break. But just like what happened over at Madison Academy, it happened to Bob Jones too. They lose a heartbreaker tonight by a final of 23 to 22. All right, what about some action from around the way as well? It was Wes Morgan began their playoff run recently with a game against Holly Pond in Trinity. We pick things up on West Morgan's first drive and on third and long quarterback Gabe Peluso finds Maurice Gray on the screen pass and Gray says, I'm not done yet. Watch him juke a couple defenders, show that speed and outruns the entire defense on a 71 yard pass and catch for a touchdown and that puts the Rebels up seven to nothing. Holly Pond, they would get the ball back, but on the next possession, their quarterback, Kyler Chaney, is forced out of pocket, has to throw the ball deep, and he's intercepted by Ashton Owens. Check out the nice one-handed grab right there. Now the Rebels, they would then march down the field, and Gabe Peluso decides, hey, let me just call my own number, running the read option, and easily gets into the end zone. 14 to nothing at that point. West Morgan, they were up, and they went easily by a final of 35 to nothing. The Austin Black Bears are coming off an undefeated regular season and they are now hoping they can earn the program's first state title. But to be one step closer to that goal, they need to take down Carver from Birmingham. The Black Bears are averaging 45 points per game. Let's see how many they can rack up tonight. After Carver went four and out, Austin gets the ball and on their first play, Asa Martin takes the handoff and does what he does best. That's race down the field into the end zone for the touchdown to put Austin up early. On Carver's next drive, they take it down the field and are going for it again on fourth down, but Austin's defense says not tonight, and they get the ball back. And a few plays later, Martin does it again. He takes it 87 yards this time to the house. And Austin goes up 14-0. I think he's making a case to be Mr. Football this year. <laughs> he really is. He finished the first half with eight rushes for 198 yards and three touchdowns. And Austin goes on to shut out Carver 48-0. 
to Muscle Shoals. The Trojans are hosting Gardendale tonight. Now, last year, Muscle Shoals lost by four points in the regular season to the Rockets, but beat them by four in the second round of the playoffs. In the first, Will Crowder is looking for a man, but he is taken down, and he fumbles the ball, and the Trojans recover a few plays later. The Trojans capitalize. Terrell McDonald keeps it and pushes his way across the goal line. They miss the point after, so they lead by six. To the second now, it's McDonald again keeping it and taking it into the end zone. The Trojans go for two after this and don't get it, so they lead 12-0. Let's go to the final. Muscle Shoals goes on to win 23-20. Close ball game right there, Hannah. Yes, it is. All right. So, of course, you know, we're definitely on social media, and you can always send us a tweet at Mo Carter WZDX and also at Hannah WZDX, just like we did over the last couple of weeks. We might read it out a little later on air. There's more action from week one of the playoffs coming up. When we return, we'll dive into class 3A and also into class 5A action. That's coming up shortly right here on First Down Friday night. First Down Friday Night is sponsored in part by Bojangles' famous chicken and biscuits. And welcome back. It's time for Spirit of the Week, sponsored by the lovely people at Bojangles. I got my boxes ready today, Hannah. I see that, Mo. This week it goes out to the Plainview Marching Band. All right, let's tell you about the Plainview Marching Band. Of course, they're under the direction of Matt Stevens, and he's been there for 11 years. A few weeks ago, they competed in the Northeast Alabama Marching Invitational, receiving all superior rankings. Stevens says his band is gearing up for a Christmas parade on December the 9th in the hometown of Rainsville. Once again, congrats to the Plainview a Marching Band. Plainview has only lost once this season, and they finished 6 0 in 3A Region 7 tonight. They host Weaver in the first round. Weaver just made it into the playoffs, earning the fourth spot in Region 5. In the first, Philip Duke hands the ball off to Anthony Cooper, and he picks up the first down, putting the Bears in good field position. And a few plays later, Hans is going long, and he connects with Cade Willingham in the end zone for the touchdown, but the extra point is no good, so Plainview leads 6-0. Still in the first, Dalton Hamby hands the ball off to Shamir Spings, and he dodges a few tackles to pick up the first down, but the Bearcats are unable to score, and Plainview gets the ball back with just a few seconds to go before the half, and Hamby keeps the ball and finds a hole to keep the Bearcats alive. On the very next play, Hamby keeps the ball again. He spins out of a tackle and across the goal line, the ball comes out. But that counts as a touchdown and they go up seven to six. And this game goes into double overtime and Weaver comes out on top at 30 to 29. Gotta hate that for playing view. Yeah, it's a tough loss for them for sure. Taking it up the mound to Colbert Heights and Locust Fork in the third, Kevin Shaw. Keeps the ball and powers up the middle. Locust Fork just can't get him down. And with a push from his teammates, he picks up the first down. One snap later, and Shaw hands the ball off to Dylan Chandler, and he also takes it up the middle, this time for a touchdown. And on this drive, he surpasses the 1,000-yard rushing mark this season. Good for him. Locust Fork with the ball now, and Joseph Musso finds Jarrett Peoples, and he shakes off a few tackles to pick up the first down, but their drive stalls. Later, Shaw with a solid pass to Chandler, and he picks up a big game before he is tripped up. But on the next play, Shaw hands it off to Chandler here, and he gets the touchdown, and the Wildcats go up by 21. Colbert Heights shuts out Locust Fork 28-0, and they will play Weaver next week. All right, now, history was made last night in Milton Frank Stadium in Class 5A. The May Jemison Jaguars hosted a playoff game for the first time in their short history. The team has had great success during the regular season of 2017, wanted to continue that in the postseason. Coach Kelvis White and the Jags 
hosting that playoff game against a team called Corner. We picked things up on the very first possession for the Yellow Jackets, and uh, guess what? They cough up the ball. Skylar Laurel fumbles it. Mae Jemison's Jalen Mackin recovers the ball for the Jags, and guess what? Mae Jemison will waste no time going to the end zone. They hand it off to former first down Friday night MVP Harry Crump. He plays a couple of tackles, follows his blocks, and gets it in the end zone for a score. Mae Jemison up seven to nothing. After a three and out by corner, Jemison once again driving down the field and it's capped off by a four-yard quarterback keeper from Damon Easton. 14 to nothing, May Jemison on top. Now that Jaguars defense, they would not let up either. They've actually been a strong point of the squad all season long as Skylar Laura gets pressure on him. He just decides to throw up a wild duck and is intercepted by Kyle Davis. Let's check out your final score as the Jaguars cruise to a shutout victory by a final of 44 to to nothing. Now, May Jemison awaiting the winner of this game, St. Clair County and Guntersville. Take you out to Guntersville last night for all the action. First quarter, the Saints, they were trying to score first as Jace Fisher will get his pass deflected by Logan Grant and it's intercepted by John Lawson. He's got some blocks in front of him. He could go all the way, but he gets tackled at the one yard line. I mean, great play, but come on, man, you got to finish it up. But the cheerleaders, they are definitely loving it. Of course, we heard from those Gunnerville cheerleaders earlier in the show. A few plays later, Jacob Weisner called his own number and gets the first points of the game on the board. Gunnersville, they're on top, seven to nothing. Now it is third and long. And you can check out a long pass play coming off after a little celebration by those Gunnersville Wildcats. All right, here's that play right here. Throwing it deep, and C.J. Williamson, the basketball stand-up, shows that he's got those hops right there. A 30-yard gain on the plate. Eventually, that would set up this. Archer Charles will eventually come up with the handoff. Watch him run behind the blockers. Then we'll get the referee getting into the way, but then we see him scoring from three yards out. 14 to nothing. Gunnersville's in control of this contest, but let's check out your final ads. St. Clair County has a furious comeback and beats Gunnersville by a final of 28 to 21. So next week it'll be St. Clair County and Mae Jemison in the second round of the playoffs. All right, Florence is at Pinton Valley tonight and former Scottsboro QB Bo Nix gets the Indians on the board first, finding his receiver in the end zone. They go up 7-0 later. It's now 10-0 Indians and the Falcons are driving down the field as Bradley Dorrit finds Cardarius Thompson who makes the great diving catch there. On the next play, Ryan Malone takes it up the middle to put the Falcons on the board 10 to 7. But in the second quarter, it's all pins and Valley Knicks. Finds Orion Morris, who puts on the dance moves to find his way in for the score. And it's 17 to 7. And they add to it from there. Let's go to the final. Pins and Valley goes on to win. 45 to 20. All right, let's tell you about some other score from around the way. Clay Chalkville shuts out Athens tonight by a final of 21 to nothing. Other scores of Class 5A, Coach Tony Woods and the lead generals. They upset Hayden last night, 31-21. They'll host Briarwood Christian next week here in Huntsville, while Brooks, they had a hard time at first against West Point, but they went on to win. 41-30, they'll take on Etowah next week. We have to take a quick break, but when we come back, we have much more playoff action, plus we check out our MVP of the week. Stay with us. Let's get back to the highlights on First Down Friday night on WZDX. Of course, we're going to take a quick time out from all the high school football action and talk about our MVP of the week. The honor goes out to Jerry McCarron from St. John Paul II. It had to be more than four years. It had been more than four years since the Falcons had won a football game. But last Friday night, Jerry McCarron ran for 199 yards on 32 carries and caught an 18-yard touchdown pass to help push St. John Paul the second pass. Clements, it's a huge victory for the Falcons that lack the size and depth of their opponents. But McCarron isn't taking credit for the win. And the sled dogs. Uh, pretty much destroyed Clemens' defense, and um, I kind of just benefited off of their destruction. He plays hard, he works really hard, he does his job, he holds his teammates accountable. He had a great day running the football, uh, I think it was uh, right at 200 yards rushing, uh, which uh, I've been told is a single game record for us as a, as a school. Um, but he just worked hard, he put the team on his back. 
Now, if you think you know of a deserving athlete who can be our next First Down Friday Night MVP, just send us an email at firstdownmvp at rocketcitynow.com with the player's name, school, position, and, of course, those lovely stats. From the last game, the winner will be announced every Wednesday on WZDX, and we'll recap that person right here on First Down Friday Night. Let's get back to the action now. 10-0 Rodgers, the Pirates, walking out with a senior tribute tonight. They were taking on Haleyville, trying to make a deep postseason run. We'll start things off in the first quarter. Third play of the game, Morty Rogers throws it to Daniel Mitchell, and he uses his blockers and makes the defender miss, and he takes it all the way to the house. He will not be denied the end zone for a Pirates touchdown. They're on top, seven to nothing. And of course, the teammates got to show them some love right there. Now the Lions looking to respond, and eventually they will do so with Charles McElpine throwing it to Calvin Taylor, who comes up a yard short. But after a false start, Taylor would decide to just go ahead and just call his own number and find Pater right here. He ties the ball game up at seven apiece. But Rodgers, they would not keep this game tied for long. They respond right here. A handoff will be coming up to Daniel Mitchell and he comes around the right end, and he scores another touchdown right there. There are 14 to 7. Let's check out your final score as Rodgers goes on to win easily by final 45 to 7. They're cruising to the next round of the playoffs. To Kusa Christian at Cherokee in 1A at scoreless in the first when Arian Strong with the quarterback sneak, and he is able to pick up the first down for Cherokee, and that leads to this on the next play. Strong finds Devon Haley. And he takes it into the end zone to put the Indians up 7-0. Later, Kusa Christian's Caden Lipscomb is looking for Evan Delp, but Trey Leafen breaks up the pass and the drive stalls. And in the second, Strong hands the ball off to Willie Padron, and he finds the hole to keep the chains moving, picking up that first down on the next play, Strong. Lobs it towards the end zone, and Havar Strong is there to make the catch, and Cherokee widened its lead to 13, and Cherokee goes on to win 49-0. In the battle of Devils, it's the Lawrence County Red Devils against the Mortimer Jordan Blue Devils. We'll pick things up in the first quarter, Red Devils, Driving down the field until this happened. Austin Blankenship is picked off by Garen Helm, and he's taking it all the way back. 53 yards for a pick six, and the Blue Devils lead the Red Devils 7 to nothing. Later, the Red Devils in the red zone. Not another good result for Blankenship as he is picked off again by Blake Chapin. That ends up going another way. And eventually, Mortimer Jordan would capitalize off that interception. Cortland Marsh with the quarterback sweep around the left side. He finds pay dirt 14 to nothing. Mortimer Jordan on top at that point. Lawrence County falls in this game by a final of 28 to 12. Westminster Christian is at Sacks tonight. This is the Wildcats' third playoff appearance in the program's 13-year history. Sacks on the move in the first quarter. Lederick Bell airs it out by the sideline, and Abadie comes up with the catch for a gain of 27 yards. Later in the drive, to Darius Griffin on the carry, but Duke Rawlings strips it, and Nathaniel Pride is there to recover it. A great defensive effort there, but the drive would stall. On the ensuing sacks drive, Jonathan Cobb gets the ball and picks up 17 yards on the carry. And two plays later, Bell on the keeper. He goes 26 yards to the house, and the two-point conversion is good. Sacks goes up 8-0. Let's go to the final. Sacks goes on to win 42-21. to Spark been in the playoffs for the first time in a long time, but they get... Hoover, which is never a very easy game to play or an easy opponent to take on. Their quarterback, Jalen Parker, decides to toss it over to Shedrick Jackson in the flat. He takes it 10 yards for a score. You know, he's got a great, he's got an uncle. His name is Bo Jackson. Pretty good genes, right? Uh, just a little. Exactly. Still in the first, they give it to Jaquez Allen. He breaks a couple of tackles and cuts his way back. Eventually, he makes that house call for a touchdown. 14 to nothing. Hoover on top of Sparkman. At that point, Hoover goes on the win tonight, eliminating Sparkman by a final of 49 to 7. All right, we've wrapped up everything with all our high school stuff, but we've got college action coming your way, or college previews actually coming up. We'll talk about the big games that are happening this weekend. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
Looking forward to a very big weekend of college football. Alabama, first of all, they're tasked with slowing down Mississippi State quarterback Nick Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald is fifth in the SEC, averaging nearly 90 yards per game on the ground. He's accounted for 25 touchdowns on the year. While facing Fitzgerald, the tie will also have to deal with playing at Davis Wade Stadium. Now, Saban-led teams have been very successful there, but the wins have not looked great. And a big top 10 matchup tomorrow. The Auburn Tigers are hosting top ranked Georgia. This will be the Tigers toughest test so far this season and they will have to find a way to stop Georgia's one two punch of Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle to have a chance of winning. But they will have home field advantage tomorrow. Kickoff is set for 2 30. Alabama A&M, they're out of the SWAC title race, but the Bulldogs still could do something that no A&M team has been able to do since joining the SWAC, and that's go undefeated at home. The Bulldogs have two more home games at Lewis Cruz to finish out the season. They, first of all, will take on Jackson State tomorrow, and they can win tomorrow and win next week. Hey, they'll finish with an undefeated home record. Jacksonville State plays at UT Martin tomorrow. This is a team that played the Gamecocks at the end of last season for a share of the OVC title. The JSU came out on top this year. UT Martin hasn't played as well, but head coach John Gross says their 5-9 record doesn't reflect how good they are. Kickoff is set for 2 p.m. And the UNA Lions are hosting Mississippi College on Saturday. The Lions are still trying to avoid their first losing season since 2002. Injuries have really hampered UNA season this year, but that will put them at 5-5. Five and five. Kickoff is set for 1.30 tomorrow out there in Florence. So a full night of high school football, a full day of college football tomorrow, and somehow, somewhere, we're going to make it, right? I know. It'll be a long weekend. <laughs> exactly. We'll definitely make it. We also, look, we want to thank you for joining us here on First Down Friday night. We'll see you next time.